<laughs> but nevertheless, Colin Firth's Oscar success as Best Actor has prompted a lot of celebrating, particularly amongst those who knew him when he was younger. Well, he was around these parts, wasn't he, down in, in, in Winchester area? He was. Started. He started with the Rockley Players, apparently, as a teenager. Um, so Daniel Glavin is with one of those people tonight at West End in Southampton. Danielle. Well, Sally, um, forget all the reviewers have said that they loved his performance in the King's Speech, but forget about them. In my hands, I have one of the first reviews ever written about Colin Firth's acting. The lady who wrote it went to school with him, and in a couple of minutes, you can find out what she thought of him. But first of all, let's take a look at last night, hear his acceptance speech, and meet some other people who knew him. Colin Firth, the King's Speech. Last year, Colin Firth missed out on Best Actor, but not this time. It was his night. He warned the crowd that winning had stirred dance movements deep inside. Joyous as they may be for me, um, it would be extremely problematic if they make it to my legs before I get off stage. I have received... From Hampshire lad to Hollywood royalty, Colin Firth's come a long way. He won his Oscar for his portrayal of King George VI as he struggled to overcome a stammer. But what about those early days in Hampshire? Would you believe he used to play rounders in a graveyard with his friends Erin and Tracy Riley? Erin was his best friend and says Colin saved him from a few fights. He was too cool to dance but always good fun. Rabbit shot up my leg once when we were walking as well and that scared me to death and that amused Colin. He found that highly amusing and then five minutes later he went across a log pile and the snake shot out and he let, jumped uh, out of his skin. So I found that very amusing as well because I got my own back. But, uh, yeah. So he wasn't always as cool as he is today? No, he wasn't, no. no. We have sort of followed his career as such and seen him develop as an actor and um, you can see the growth in his ability as he's gone along and we've always known that if uh, if there's a film with Colin in it then it's usually well worth watching. Colin Firth learned his trade at Barton Peveril College in Eastleigh. In his college photo a walking stick can be seen around his neck but there's been no pulling him from the stage. The head teacher nominated him for a famous alumni award last year and was amazed when he collected in person. <laughs> He's a very agreeable, very, very pleasant person. He's got good conversation. He's interested in all sorts of topics, not just acting. People will be surprised to know. He's interested in the rights of refugees. He's interested in fair trade. He's a person who you can enjoy a good couple of hours with. Motion. Drama students at the college say he's also an inspiration. If he can do it, why can't they? Well, this diary was written by Sue, Colin's old um, college mate. Now, Sue, you're very brave letting us look inside it, but you say here that you saw him in Sweeney Todd and Colin Firth was amazing. I mean, right. What was the play then? It was um, one of the Sweeney Todd, um, a, a play of Sweeney Todd, and it was part of a Victorian melodrama that we were taking part in. I think it ran for two nights and I was in the choir, so I was able to sit and see the performances in between the choir items. And was he good? He was brilliant, yes. And you say, you say one page here he was great, the next amazing. Are there any other references to him in this diary you're no, not showing me? No, there aren't any more, no. And what was he like at college? You say that the girls always crowded around him. He seemed to be very popular, not, not just with the girls, but they were, they were very, um, had a big group around him in the common room. But being in the year below him, obviously, I didn't get to see much of him. And did you think he'd go on to be a star? I'm sure I did, yes, at the time. He was very, very good, yes. OK, well, Sally... I'm going to have a look through this, and if I find any more references to Colin Firth, I will let you know. If there's any hot gossip, you will be the first to know. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for that. It is intriguing, isn't it? How oh, awful. You get famous and somebody looks through your diaries. And as we talk about diaries, Sarah, you got somebody looking through your diaries? Yeah, my mum's cleared out all her loft and she's found my old diaries. God. Oh <laughs> a blast from the past. I wonder what's in those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's right. sending them to me tomorrow. <laughs> Oscar winning pictures now. Shall we have some Oscar winning pictures now? Oh, shall we? yes. Oscar winning photographs. Have a look at this. The sun did come out today, very briefly this morning, at Kimridge in Dorset for Heather Snow. We've got Tiffy the Lurcher puppy here. Sweet. In amongst the first daffodils. That's at Pagham in West Sussex. Ken Rimmel, thanks. And Robin Boltwood sent us the dramatic sky above Swanage. So a rather cloudy day for most of us today and that is what we stick with through tonight as well. Overcast and still feeling rather chilly too. We might just see one or two breaks, 
Some of us were lucky enough to catch them today. You can see all that cloud from the satellite picture building as the day went on and through the rest of this evening and tonight. We stick with the overcast theme. We'll see one or two spits and spots of light rain and drizzle to get the night started. But I think as we head towards midnight, we'll start to dry out a touch. And for most of us, it's going to be a cloudy and dry end to the night. We may just see the odd break here and there as well with temperatures down to around two, maybe three degrees above freezing. That brings us the risk of a touch of frost into first thing tomorrow morning. So a nippy night into another cold and grey day by the looks of it. We'll stick with all that cloud and again, a bit of a repeat performance Groundhog Day if you like. We're seeing more in the way of spits and spots of rain but still not ruling out the chance of seeing some brighter skies. A fresh northeasterly breeze but dying down a touch on today so uh, still a bit of a chilly one. And then as we go into tomorrow night, well, a similar picture once again we stick with the overcast theme and again some dampness to be had at times through the overnight period. Now as we go into Wednesday we've got another cloudy day on the cards, some drizzle to be had through the course of the day. Not much going on, we've got some high pressure in charge and that means things aren't moving a lot so we have got high pressure taking charge for the tail end of the week and it stays with us through into Friday as well and that does mean that we've got some settled conditions. So as we go towards the latter part of the week things become brighter and drier so a cloudy but dry end to the week by the looks of things so here's your summary for the next few days plenty more cloud but a glimmer of sunshine by the time we get to friday Sarah, thank you very much for that. Uh, that's all we've got time for this evening. We've got more at 8 and at 10.25 and uh, we'll be here tomorrow night, half past six. Hopefully you'll join us. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.